Hello, everybody. Um, good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on when you're watching us. Uh, what this is, is this is section 1.1, Apply Properties of Real Numbers. So throughout the video, if you ever need to pause, um, feel free to do that on YouTube. If you ever need to rewind, you can do that too whenever you want. If you want to do this as more of a practice sort of thing, um, you know, what I would do is I'll wait a second after, you know, a couple seconds after I display the problem. Try it on your own, a piece of scratch paper. See if you get the right answer when I'm explaining the answer. Um, if you, this is more of a, um, I'm learning this, I was absent, um, I really need some help just hearing it all again, then feel free uh, to just watch it, um, and then, you know, you don't have to do it as a practice. But if you're doing it as practice, feel free to pause it at any time, and even if you're not, and rewind or fast forward or whatever you want to do. So, section 1.1, apply properties of real numbers. What are real numbers? Real numbers are the things we put into functions. We'll talk about functions in chapter 2. But um, functions are the machines, or the animals, or the, the big deal of Algebra 2. That's what we're going to be talking about a lot um, throughout this year. So um, just like an animal, a function eat things. You know, you put things into a function, you get something out. So just like an animal, you put things into it, and you get something out. So um, numbers are like the food of the algebra world. So, or they're like the um, ingredients that you put into a recipe or whatever. So, um, here we go. The real number system. Lots of different kinds of numbers here. So, our first one is natural numbers. Natural numbers, you can read down here, are positive whole numbers starting at 1. So, examples of natural numbers would be like 1, 2, 3, keep going up, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. Um, that's where you start off, like even if you're a little kid, when you first start saying numbers you usually start with one you don't start with zero so it's kind of where we even start little kids talking about it then we add in zero so that's the whole numbers those are zero one two three four etc adding up our next type of number is the integers these are positive and negative whole numbers so examples of integers are negative two negative one zero oops, positive one two and they go on forever in either direction again only whole numbers. Um, so even before, you know, like if you think about caveman days, they, I don't, you know, they didn't really talk about half of a tiger, I don't think. I mean, they, I guess I wasn't there. Um, but they, they just didn't deal with that sort of thing. So, um, you know, we were keep building it up. So we go kind of easy natural numbers, har harder whole numbers, a little bit more numbers, integers, and then rational numbers. Those are fractions, decimals that end in repeating decimals. So these are numbers that um, you can write it as a fraction. So, for example, four thirds. I can write that as a fraction. Um, 0.25. That's a decimal that ends. Or I can write that as a fraction. So, I mean, either 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 definition works um, for that. Other, uh, otherwise, you know, four thirds is a decimal, but it goes on forever. But it's repeating. So, as long as it's a repeating decimal, or um, a decimal that ends, it's a rational number. Basically, just we want to be able to write it as a fraction. That's the, the simplest term for a rational number. Finally, irrational numbers are decimals that don't end. So, irrational numbers, an example would be pi. It goes on forever. 3.14159, da 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 da, forever. Otherwise, we can make up a number, favorite number, 7.4859278. And keep making up numbers for the rest of eternity. Um, those are the irrational numbers. And what the real number system is, it's all of these things. All of them together are real numbers. So these are the kind of numbers that we can put into a function. These are kind of things we can feed our function animals. That's the, that's the main idea here is that we're talking about, before we even start talking about the animals themselves, we want to talk about what can we feed them and what can we do with that, with that food. So... That's the whole idea here. So there's different kind of numbers. What kind of problems can we see in section 1.1? What kind of problems will you see on your quiz after section 1.4 or your test at the end of the chapter? These are the type of problems you'll see. First of all, graphing numbers. Graph the numbers on a number line. So what we want to do when we see a problem like this, we want to write them all so that they look the same. Because right now, we've got a square root, we've got a decimal, and we have a fraction. And we have negative numbers. We've got all sorts of different things. So what we want to do first is just get them all to look sort of the same, and then we can kind of figure out from there. So 6 as a decimal, it's the same. If you go on your calculator, negative square root of 5 is negative 2.45. 2 
2.7 is already a decimal, negative 2 is already a decimal sort of number, and 7 thirds as a decimal is 2.33 going on forever. Now that they all look the same, it's really easy to, to draw a number line. So we just draw on a number line, 0, negative 1, negatives go to the left, we know that, hopefully. Positives go to the right. We try and space them out the same if we can. Sometimes you kind of run out of room, so you can't do that, but you do the best you can so that they're mildly, evenly spaced out. Now we just graph our numbers. We just put it out. 6 is right here. Negative 2.45. We go negative 2, and 2.45 is about halfway in between negative 2 and negative 3. 2.7 is a little bit past half of 2. It's right around there. Negative 2 is easy. It's right on the little dash mark. And 2.33 is about a third of the way between 2 and 3. So that's our answer. That's all we have to do. The nice thing about this is that it automatically puts them in descending or ascending order, sorry, from least to greatest. So if, we were, if the question asked for us to write them in, in least to greatest form or anything like that, well, this would be make it really easy to be able to do that. Also, this is just kind of baby steps leading up to graphing on a coordinate plane and stuff like that that you've done before, but we just want to start off with the basics and then work your way up. So that's what we're doing here. Next up, multiple choice. Which list shows the highest elevation in order from least to greatest? Least to greatest. Least to mean smallest. So we're kind of interpreting the language of math here, just like if you were in France or Spain and, you needed, and someone was speaking to you in their foreign language, you want to be able to translate that into your own English language so that you understand what's going on. Um, we want to be able to translate least to smallest and greatest to least. So we look through our problems. This is nice, multiple choice, just like the MCA test that you'll take at the end of the year. We just look for whichever one's right. And the nice thing about this is that we can kind of cross things out. So 2,407. 14,494. So that went bigger, but now from here to here, it went smaller. So it's not A. Here we have 14,494 to 2,407. We went smaller. That's not what we want to do. We want to go from the smallest number to the biggest. Here we go from 14,494 to 6,643. That's a small decrease, so it has to be B. And we can check. It's bigger, 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 bigger. So that's definitely the right answer. Our last problem here. Oops. Stuff in the way here. I'll give you a second if you want to write it down or pause the video and try it on your own. So when we do a conversion, what we want to do is write them as fractions. We'll talk, we talked about this a lot in geometry with similar figures, um, writing proportions. Proportions are equal, here, proportions are equal fractions. My handwriting isn't the greatest. I apologize for that. So what we do here, 3.5 tons, so we write that on top. We don't know how many pounds it is. That's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out how many pounds is that. So we put an X at the bottom. And then we look over here. We keep the units the same. How many pounds are in one ton? We think to ourselves something to think. We either Google it. Um, it's in our textbooks. It's, it's a lot of places. We find that it's 2,000. So what we do here is we cross multiply. 3.5 times 2,000 equals x times 1. So multiply those and we get 7,000 pounds equals x. That's what we wanted. So that is our answer. Proportions. Proportions, proportions, proportions. That's what we're doing here. Next one. 2.2 kilograms, 2 grams. So again, we go 2.2 kilograms. We want to know how many grams that is, so we don't know. And then we go over here, kilograms and grams. There are 1,000 kilo, means 1,000 grams in one kilogram. 
So again, cross multiply. get 2,200 grams equals our answer. We can do this with any kind of conversion we want to do. Miles to kilometers, kilometers to meters, kilometers to millimeters. Um, that's the nice thing about this unit conversion. This happens all the time in jobs, um, anything like that. So there you go, that's section 1.1. Um, again, you can rewatch it if you want before a test or before a quiz. So you can review the concepts. And again, these are the type of questions that you'll see on your test or quiz that's coming up.